Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hello and good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is June 16th and Mike Osterhage is back and he brought the heat with him. <laughs> Don't give him the guilt trip. I thought you were going to blame me for this. I am not blaming you for this. I'm just drawing some very uh, shady, uh, sketchy correlation oh. between you returning from the beach. That's all. <laughs> good to see you too. All right. <laughs> but I did miss you. Yes, we did. And we'll talk to you a little later. Thank we'll, you, Stephanie. We'll look at today's nine at nine. The families of two Americans fighting in Ukraine say the men have been missing for nearly a week. Both men are from Alabama. There are fears that the men have been captured by Russian forces, but the White House is still trying to confirm that information. In just a few hours, the third January 6th committee hearing before the American people is set to begin. The focus this time will be on former President Trump's effort to pressure Vice President Mike Pence to block the certification of the 2020 election. Coverage is expected to begin around noon, and we will bring it to you live on air once the hearing begins. Interest rates on the rise. The Federal Reserve is boosting a key rate by three quarters of 1%, the biggest single hike in nearly 30 years, in an effort to try and turn inflation around. Fed Chair Jerome Powell said the same kind of increase could be on the table at next month's Fed meeting if inflation doesn't slow. The high cost of gas and food is forcing many Americans to cut spending on other items. The monthly government reading on retail sales showed a drop of three-tenths of a percent in May compared with April. The shift to higher spending at gas stations and grocery store is an alarm bell for the U.S. economy. An FDA advisory panel supports COVID-19 vaccines for children six months of age to five years old. Next, the FDA will decide whether to authorize the vaccine for emergency use. Then the CDC's vaccine advisors would vote whether to recommend the shots, which is expected to happen Saturday. The vaccines are signed off on by the FDA and the CDC. The White House said shots could start as early as next week. New data shows Customs and Border Protection stopped nearly 240,000 migrants from crossing into the U.S. from Mexico back in May. That's a 2% increase compared to April. Title 42 is still in place, which allows authorities to turn migrants away at the border, but there's little legal consequence if they attempt to cross again. And officials say that has contributed to migrants making multiple attempts to cross the border. Extreme weather across the U.S. right now. Wildfires are the concern in places like Arizona and California. And the National Weather Service predicts more dangerous temperatures in these areas today. Power grids in some places are struggling to keep up. More than 100,000 customers across the U.S. have no power. And now forecasters say severe storms are moving through the lower Great Lakes region. Ford is recalling 2.9 million cars and SUVs that could roll away even when placed in park. The vehicles are the 2013 to 2019 Escape, 2013 to 2018 C-Max, 2013 to 2016 Fusion, and 2013 to 2021 Transit Connect. The issue comes from a problem with the transmission. President Joe Biden commemorating Pride Month by protecting members of the LGBTQ community. He signed an executive order yesterday that includes actions to protect children from conversion therapy and safeguard programs to prevent youth suicide. The order also creates a new initiative to protect foster youth. And that's today's Nine at Nine. And happening today, the Texas Legislative Committee investigating the Uvalde school shooting will be holding a hearing in Uvalde. They're expected to hear testimony from law enforcement and other people who were impacted. Witnesses are expected to be questioned in private. Right now, it's not clear how long this particular investigation will last. We will have a crew there for the hearing. Also happening today, San Antonio's City Council is set to decide how some of the City Council districts would change. U.S. Census showed a huge population growth, but that growth wasn't seen equally amongst all districts. An advisory committee approved a more evenly distributed map. If uh, the new map puts you in a new district, it wouldn't take effect until voters hit the polls for the May 2023 election. And taking a look outside with live cam, I know Mark said that Mike brought the heat back, but I don't know, I will give you credit because I think maybe you brought the clouds yesterday, right? Thank you, Steph. See, the eternal optimist. That glass is what, still half full? Uh, hopefully it's very full and it's big enough to jump into because, yeah, boy, yeah, you need some, uh, some way to cool off. And it almost looks like that picture is looking a little 
orangey, you know, some of that Saharan dust because that is definitely going to be uh, sticking around. We're up to 80 right now and look at the bottom number dew points at 71. So that means it's very humid out there when you get those uh, dew point temperatures even above 70. And then yes, it was nice for the uh, the cool if you will, 95 degrees yesterday. We're going to be up to 100 later on today. As far as the aquifer, it did, well, just negated yesterday's rise of two tenths, so it went down two tenths of a foot. Of course, Saw's customers are still in stage two watering restrictions. Mold is on the low side, and we have got, yeah, like I said, some of those uh, hot temperatures out there. We're going to make it up to 100, breezy, hazy. At least the Saharan dust is going to be going away once we get into the next couple of days, but those triple digits are not going anywhere. Quick check of traffic. Steven, what's going on? That is hot out there, Mike. Yep. But <laughs> yes, uh, let's get a look at the roadways right now. 37 or 35 at Pine. Right now, the commute's not looking too bad. So if you have to head out in the next few moments, Breathe a sigh of relief because you're not going to encounter much many issues out there on the roadways. US 90 at Couples big gateway right there into the San Antonio area, as I like to say. So we have a few more drivers that are still getting their way their day started. But be on the lookout because stalls right now that has been the trending trouble. I 10 eastbound at Lock and Terra Parkway is the latest one where you have la added to a very long list and we're not going to get to all of them because that would take up a lot of the show. But you can see there we have a few more that were detected right there, not far from I 35 and Nogalitos as well as a crash at just popped up off of 410. We'll have to find out how that impacts the commute, but you can see that there are still several active construction spots taking place. Keep in mind, this construction does lead to some slowdowns. We want to make sure that you plan ahead. So grab your phone, open your camera app, and scan this QR code by tapping the center of your screen. That's going to take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. And of course, that has the latest on the closures that are taking place in your area. Just remember to scroll to the bottom of the page. You'll find that uh, link right there. And also, you'll find out if anything could be impacting your drive time. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. In your morning headlines, new data out shows the amount of crashes involving auto driving software like the ones in Tesla's and high prices fueling a string of gas thefts across the country. Plus, a European man is seeing the world on foot. And would you fly in a double decker airplane seat? Hmm. RJ Marcus is with us this morning to share these stories. Hey, good morning. Based on what good the conversation morning, in the newsroom, it's, it's going to be a hard no for now, but yes, we'll hear you out. Yeah, we'll show everybody this concept. It's a very interesting concept. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm still, yeah, a little on the fence, but leaning no towards now, but we'll talk about this here in just a little bit. So let's start, start first, guys, with these self-driving Teslas as we're learning more about these vehicles that were involved in hundreds of crashes in less than a year. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration looked at nine months of crash data from vehicles using driver assist technologies like Tesla Autopilot. It found these vehicles got into 367 crashes in just the last nine months, and that includes six deadly crashes and five with serious injuries. A majority of those crashes involved Tesla's 273 of them to be exact. The agency also found the vehicles were either self Full self-driving Teslas are those running the software, again called Tesla Autopilot. Okay, now to Florida, where police there are looking for two men who stole, get this, more than a thousand gallons of diesel fuel from a gas station near Orlando. Police say the two suspects were in identical white F-250s with large tanks in the bed of their trucks, and they were able to get away with more than $6,000 worth of diesel fuel. Investigators think the men somehow got access to the key for the pump and visited the same pump throughout the day, taking turns filling up. Police released photos of the men and are asking the public's help in finding them. They also say there's been an increase in these types of thefts as gas prices continue to rise. We're now starting to see that. Um, it's, I think it's maybe our second or third report in recent weeks of a uh, similar nature. That's crazy. Criminals, you know. It's sad that it, that it has to come to that. Yeah, sad situation there. So over the past few months, Florida authorities have made other arrests for gas thefts in four different counties. You see something that we're seeing a lot of places. OK, guys, so we're dealing a lot when it comes to flying, got delays, cancellations. But check this out. This could be possibly the future of flying the friendly skies. I don't know. This is an interesting concept. This week, designer Alejandro Nunez Vicente showcased his new lounge airplane seat. You can see behind me in this new concept was shown off at the 2022 Aircraft Interiors Expo in Germany. So look at this right here. This prototype features a double decker style seating. Stephanie is laughing over there. <laughs> 
<laughs> arrangement <laughs> for airplanes. So flyers would access the top level using two ladder-like steps, and then passengers behind them could then stretch their legs, but you could see not a lot of face room, I guess that's what we're calling it there. Um, Nunez Vicente says his frustration with the current lack of leg room gave him this idea, but he also admits that passengers, especially those at the top level, would not be able to stand upright in the seats. Obviously not, but he argues that many travelers already cannot stand when flying economy. The designer says that there is a space between the levels for the travelers to store their luggage. Is, is there a recline? I, I hope not. <laughs> You might knock Same somebody here. out. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to. Ma'am, I well, can't breathe. Ma'am, ma'am. There is a, a slight recline. Yeah, there is. A is. Slight recline. Oh my yeah. goodness. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it'll see the light of day, Maybe but either. we'll see. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. Interesting design, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't think anyone's going to push for that anytime soon. All right, guys. So we're talking about taking the skies. How about staying on foot? And this may sound like a little bit of a riddle here, but how do you walk around the world? Well, it's not that complicated, according to this man. It's one step at a time, and a Dutchman here is taking this journey, embarking on an epic 25,000 mile trek that started all the way in May. So check this out. So the Netherlands native, his name is Tom Bowman, is on a years long mission to walk around the world. He's already walked for more than 400 days, and he's trying to become the first person to walk across all seven continents on Foot. Pretty cool idea here. So the idea coming to Tom when he was at rock bottom, he said that he was an addict and struggling with mental health issues. And get this, this is really interesting too. Each night, Tom knocks on a stranger's door asking for a place to sleep. I think three weeks ago, I slept in a limo at someone's driveway in between the goats in, um, in Jordan in the desert. And then the next day, they served me a dinner. They served me a goat hat including the tongue and the eyes. I sold everything, my house, my belongings, and I left for 300 bucks and I started traveling and I found myself. So wait, so he slept among the goats and then he wound up being served goat? Yes. Okay, got <laughs> yeah. it. That's what I got from that. Also. Got it. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you didn't catch that there, so Tom, uh, he said he had $300 to his name. That's when he started to do this uh, walk around the world. He's using this walk to raise money to help rebuild schools in Nepal. And of course, you can follow him on Instagram. And I looked up earlier, guys, and he has been across uh, states here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So he's already kind of made his way through here. I don't know if it was the complete, I don't really know exactly the path that he's going. But uh, but yeah, he says he walks about 30 miles a day. Got to be honest. Gump, guys. Wow. Part, there's a part of me that is very jealous uh, that yeah. the people that can kind of walk away from everything and just yeah. fulfill that wanderlust to just go and be gone. Yeah, absolutely. He said mm -hmm. that he's only encountered one bit of danger once when there were some like teens that chased him. Well, I did, forgot what country where? that, like Morocco or something okay, like that. Okay, Morocco. Wow. Yeah, 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 something like that. But for the most part, he said everyone's been nice and obviously feeding him a goat when he's sleeping. Huh. <laughs> wow. Interesting. With the goats, yeah. Very well, adventurous. We wait absolutely. for the blog or the book, right? Yeah, yeah, there we go. All right, thank you very much, Thanks, sir. Guys. Right now, 9-11, about 80 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. With the raise in interest rates, it could mean harder times for many people. How this recent hike will affect certain things and what some experts say you should do to avoid getting in a bind. Plus, coming up, a look at a summer camp focused on STEM-related activities, including how to fly drones. Ready, set, Drones. Students take to the skies with drones and rockets at a new summer camp. It's an unforgettable summer at Harris Middle School summer camp packed with adventure and hands-on activities. Tiffany Huetas joins us live from the camp with more. And Tiffany, what does the camp focus on? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. There's so many things they do here at the camp, everything tied to STEM. Just check it out behind me. Take a look at this really cool obstacle course for drones. They're also doing and building, launching rockets and even programming robots. We have Sharon, one of the STEM teachers here at the school and Ryan, a seventh grader to talk a little bit more. Sharon, good morning. Talk to us about this camp. Good morning. Our students have been coming this summer to learn about rockets and drones. We got a grant from LULAC National Education Service Center. They uh, were able to donate some money for us. Our students, of course, like I said, we got the drones, the rockets, 
because they are learning about um, some TIG skills that we definitely need in our classroom. And so, like I said, they're learning through um, fun, and that has definitely helped their skills. How is this helping kids in our community? Um, our students don't necessarily have all the resources that other students in some of the bigger districts have, so it's definitely helping them um, get these resources that they need. And what are we looking at right now? What is this happening, this course? Um, this is a drone cage, and so this is allowing them to um, build those skills that they need to land and fly through, and then hopefully in the future, hopefully later this year, we'll be able to compete in some drone competitions. That's awesome. And Ryan, talk to us about what's your favorite part about the camp? Um, I think like the funnest part is that it's just like a very fun environment and like a very fun like working education. Um, and then like we build a lot of rockets and like robots and like it's just a very fun experience in overall. You were talking to me in detail about these rockets behind me. How long does it take to build one? Um, like the quickest, like if you're really focused, it can take up to only one day. But like since now we are getting like more intense rockets and more difficulty, um, it can take up to half a week. So awesome. Well, talk. can you show us how this all works? Yes. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to launch some of these right here. Here's two different ones that we, uh, one can go up to like 600 feet, the other one 1,600 feet. So Ryan, go ahead, let's count it off. One, two, three. Well, um, sometimes it's student error, they don't wanna launch, so we're gonna go ahead and try to fix it. And um, we'll try again here in a little bit. And that's what we were talking about before we went live. This is what it's all about, learning, and there's so many different cool rockets that they're building throughout this summer, right? Yes, and they're going to go ahead and try again. Um, sometimes it's just the little clips that aren't working, the little starters. They're very fragile. And so they're going to go ahead and try again. And hopefully, ready, guys? Let's see if this will work. There it goes. Woo! And there we go. So sometimes it's just the clip is off. And where does it fall? <laughs> and then we hopefully, like I said, 600 feet, we'll see where it falls. So cool. Well, I'm so happy that you joined us this morning to talk about this amazing camp. We're going to have more on this on the noon show. Back and to thank you. Thank you for coming out. Yes. Thank you, Tiffany. That's pretty cool. Oh, they're having a lot of fun out yeah. there. Yeah, I used to use those model rockets as a kid, and, and it, the little metal igniter that goes up inside uh -huh. the solid rocket motor sometimes, it's, it's flimsy, doesn't always work, so I think that's what happened there, and they In did finally case. work it out. Yeah, well, I'm glad it worked out. It's so much fun, too, especially when you do, like, these two- or three-stage rockets. I mean, they go up really high. It's neat to watch, mm -hmm. but that is a big lesson, though, the, the trial and error. Yes. Big, big, big. And here in the studio, the rocket launches, and we cheered. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, we we're, did. we're excited yeah. here, too. We're like, yay. Yeah, those things are, and, and I mean, that's so fun, summer camp like that. Yeah. And like they were talking about having fun learning, and then you don't realize that you're learning. So. Right. Well, that's, and they've also figured out, too, it's awesome to be outside at 920 in the morning versus 220 yes. in the afternoon. Yes. Exactly, because it's going to be another scorcher again today. Yesterday, of course, we had some of those clouds, and of course, we had the Saharan dust which you can see very well in this picture. It makes for great sunsets. I mean, it really adds to those vibrant oranges out there, but boy, I mean, just looking, thank you for the KSAC Connect picture, by the way, but uh, you know, you, you just look at the, at the skyline out there and you just see that orangey stuff hanging around here. Uh, it doesn't look too, well, some of that haze is probably being contributed to right there, but sun is uh, starting to squeak through some of these clouds right now. Speaking of the dust, it is going to be uh, on the denser side today, kind of like yesterday, or maybe even a bit more, and then it's gonna start to thin out as we go on in toward the weekend. So I guess that's one benefit, but because it really doesn't do anything to block the sun that much as far as heating things up. Although long range, it does look like we may get another fairly decent plume of dust coming in here by the uh, mid portion of next week. 84 degrees right now. That's the heat index already. 86 at Stinson, 87 down around uh, Pleasanton. So yeah, even this early in the morning, we're seeing those heat index readings go up very, very quickly. Now, at least we are going to get uh, somewhat of a drop in the humidity by later on this afternoon, so it won't be quite as bad a heat index. But the thing is, the trick is, you got to be in the shade. Because um, if you're in the direct sun, then add 10, 15 degrees to what it actually feels like, because we're feeling the air temperature, but the sun then heats you up if you're out in the direct sun. Here's the uh, visible satellite picture. 
And already, I mean, yeah, we've got our low morning clouds, but there's not a whole lot of shade out there from uh, from Mother Nature. 87 degrees at 11, 90 at noon. So add 10 degrees pretty much to where we are as of right now. And then we'll add another 10 degrees to that. And we're going to make it up to 100 later on today. Wind's going to be out of the uh, south 10, 15, 20 miles per hour. A bit of a breeze out there. And we'll still be in the upper 90s, even going in toward the uh, waning hours of daylight. Light, and once the sun finally goes down, it's not going to cool off all that quickly. Like I said, the one plus, I guess you could call it, is the fact that yes, the dew point temperatures will be dropping down somewhat later on. So we're not going to have that intense heat index to deal with. Then we do it all over again tomorrow. The 24 hour cycle that we go through with more humidity in the morning, and then it will drop down somewhat in the afternoon hours. Here's the uh, infrared satellite picture. And if you kind of squint, you can see a few of those. Uh, Feel those clouds hanging around here, but really there's nothing substantial as far as any weather systems, as far as any cloud cover, or anything like that. All of that is well up there to the north. We've had severe weather around the Great Lakes, that flooding around Yellowstone, another system coming in the Pacific Northwest, and all of that just like a conga line up there, one right after the other, moving straight west to east. Nothing down here. That pattern is just not going to be changing pretty much in the near future at all in the foreseeable future. 90 at noon today, mostly sunny skies. It is going to be that hazy sunshine, though. We'll make it up to 100 later on this afternoon. And then over the next few days, nothing is going to be changing. Slightly breezy, a lot of sunshine in the afternoon, long holiday weekend. If you're going to be outside doing anything, just do it early on in the day before it really heats up. We're going to be back with a whole lot more after this. Stick around. As you may have heard by now, the Federal Reserve has instituted its largest interest rate hike in nearly 30 years. It's aimed at tackling inflation and getting the American economy back on track. But as CNN's Brian Todd reports, for the average consumer, it could mean tough times ahead. With prices surging and Americans struggling to keep up, the Federal Reserve takes a bold step to tame what seems like relentless inflation and raises interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point, its biggest hike in nearly three decades. We at the Fed understand the hardship that high inflation is causing. We're strongly committed to bringing inflation back down and we're moving expeditiously to do so. Is this too much of a hammer from the Feds? I don't think so. I think it's a strong move by the Federal Reserve to attempt to regain control of the narrative. What it could turn out to be is that a little more action today portends a little less in the future. A little less what? Pain? A little less pain, a little less increase in interest rates in order to get the inflation job done. In fact, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell suggested the government likely won't make a habit of being this aggressive with interest rate hikes in the future, but he didn't rule out another significant increase in the coming months. When it raised interest rates a half a point last month, the Fed expected that would bring inflation down, but it kept climbing to a 40-year high. It was quite eye-catching, and, and we noticed that. This rate hike will affect millions of American households and businesses, pushing up the cost of borrowing for major purchases. For people who are first time home buyers looking to get that mortgage right now, that's gonna become much more difficult than it would have a few months ago. People who are in the market to purchase a car are gonna have higher borrowing rates today than they did three months ago. Also feeling the pinch, people who are looking to tap into their retirement accounts soon. Their 401k balance is down by a lot, so they're going to have to maybe recalibrate on when they can retire. The rate hike comes on top of crushing gas and food prices, which have frustrated consumers in recent months, even forcing some to change their behavior. We're confined, you know, we're just kind of being kind of like kept prisoners in our own, our own little spaces because we can't afford to do anything. <laughs> I am so not used to this, eight gallons for $40. That's kind of crazy. Even with this hardship, the Fed chairman says he hopes the government can raise interest rates without plunging the U.S. economy into a recession. We don't seek to put people out of work, of course. We, we never think too many people are working and fewer people need to have jobs. But we also think that you, you really cannot have the kind of labor market we want without price stability. And as far as the Fed goes, some would say this is too little, too late. That was Brian Todd reporting. Experts say the average American consumer should not overextend themselves on credit.
That's right. They say you should pay off your credit cards if you can and try not to borrow money for one-time big purchases like vacations or furniture. Try to resist that temptation yeah. for a little while longer at least. Mm -hmm. Right now it's 928, about 80 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, time now is about 932. Let's get a look here. What we are seeing is a slow moving traffic there at 1604. Now, Transguide doesn't have this area labeled, but we can tell you this is out there in the northwest side. Uh, what we are looking at is again, slow moving traffic due to a crash that was reported just minutes ago, but it also seems within the last few minutes we did see some progress. Uh, vehicles are moving, but just a little slowly at this hour. We also know that there's a ton of work going on at this area, so keep that in mind as well. We are noticing a delay in the westbound lanes of Loop 1604. Loop 1604, not far from Northwest Military Highway. So keep that in mind if you're trying to get to I-10 because a quick detour you could take is just exit Hebner Road and take that and you'll hit I-10 if you're trying to get into the eastbound lanes. But if you are trying to uh, just navigate uh, through the westbound lanes of 1604, maybe just take the access road and you won't have any trouble there. Now that wide look at the map, thankfully no other problems to talk about. It does appear that our map picked up a crash, but uh, we're looking, we looked into that a little bit closer. It actually looks like a stalled vehicle out there by 410. So just check your vehicles as well before you get out on the roadways, but still slow moving traffic right here in the northwest side of San Antonio, guys. Thank you, Steve. A new movement on the COVID vaccine front and new changes when it comes to COVID-19 here in San Antonio. An FDA advisory panel supports vaccines for children as young as six months old, and now the FDA is expected to authorize emergency use for the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. Then the CDC would vote on it, which is expected to happen on Saturday. Here in San Antonio, Metro Health says our risk level is worsening. Right now we are in the medium category. Lee Wallman spoke with health leaders on where we stand 18 months since the vaccines were first introduced to our community. For weeks, the COVID-19 risk dial on Metro Health's website has remained steady at low until now. We don't notice it as much because a lot fewer people are in the hospital. The cases, I mean, we're at now at a level where it's around 500 a day the last time I checked. Dr. Junda Wu, the local health authority for the city, says the low hospitalizations are a good sign. The vaccines are doing their job and keeping people who are infected less sick. Since they rolled out December 15th, 2020, almost 72% of the population is vaccinated. 39% of eligible people are boosted. When you look at it by age group, the lowest percentage of people boosted is among younger people. Children are falling behind when it comes to vaccinations. Dr. Mandy Tibble Svatek with University Health says it's important parents protect their kids from severe cases of COVID, as well as residual effects like multi-system inflammatory syndrome, also known as MIS-C. Those that have been vaccinated Really, the number of MIS-C cases is extremely low in comparison to those children that have not been vaccinated. Both Dr. Wu and Dr. Svatek agree the FDA giving the thumbs up to the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines for kids six months to five years old would be an important step in fighting the spread of COVID-19. In our community, there's mixed reaction when it comes to vaccinating our youngest. I think if it's FDA approved, I mean, it's okay. For the parents that wanted to get their kids vaccinated, yeah. I think that's a good idea for them, but I mean, personally, I wouldn't. I, I, I don't like it. The White House says vaccines should be ready to roll out as soon as next week. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And taking a look outside with live ham. Ah, looks like it's warming up to 81 degrees now, Mike. Lovely. <laughs> and add almost 20 to that, and that's where we're going to be uh, later on this afternoon. Different vantage point, and uh, looks a little cloudier over there looking down to the south. And some of that haze there, we can barely make out the uh, skyline of downtown. Heat index right now, 84 degrees is what it feels like. 88 is the heat index at Stinson, one of the hotter spots there. 86 both Castroville as well as Pleasanton. So what leftover clouds we have right now, warm and humid is going to give way to plenty more sunshine, hazy, and again, 100 for a high temperature. At least the humidity is going to be dropping down somewhat, so we're not going to have any just ridiculously high heat index readings later on today. Not as hazy over the weekend, so the hair and dust is going to be thinning out, but still going to be very hot, and there's really no relief in sight. We're going to keep triple digits around in through most all of next week. We'll take a look at the long holiday weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. 
Thank you, Mike. The UTSA is asking for public input on the future of the Institute of Texan Cultures, the museum that has stood at Hemisphere Park for more than five decades. Now they want to plan for the next 50 years. This week, UTSA released a draft report that includes three different scenarios for the museum's future. One of which involves relocating out of the Texas Pavilion um, and, and away from the Hemisphere District. Third option would be to keep the museum where it's at and possibly redesigning or modifying it. This option also includes some much needed renovations and upgrades to get the ITC to national accreditation standards like the Witte and McNay Museums. The online survey is on UTSA's website. You can find a link to the survey on ksat.com. The whole process could take up to four months time. And June is Pride Month, the time to celebrate the history, culture, and people of the LGBTQ plus community. But the mood has changed in light of recent events, including the Idaho Pride Parade arrests and a Dallas Drag Queen event for kids sparking outrage. So we reached out to Ray Lopez Entertainment, a company that represents several drag queens and performers throughout San Antonio and recently hosted a kid-friendly Disney-themed drag queen brunch. They told Alicia Barrera it's not about sexualizing anyone, but instead about spreading happiness and love. She's the belle of the ball in nightclubs and gay pride festivals. By birth, he's Darius Williams, but with a little makeup, jewels, and custom outfits, transforms into a fierce drag queen. My stage name is Megan Iman Deluxe. Megan has been entertaining crowds for more than five years. When you perform, it's, it's very fun and exciting to see the audience reaction and how they uh, react to, you know, people doing flips or cartwheels or splits and everything, and they love it. And while Florida and Texas Republican lawmakers push for laws to ban kids from drag shows, the show must go on. It makes me want to have fun. But in the back of her mind and of those she performs alongside with, there's fear. In our line of work or, or you know, just being a part of the LGBTQ community, you're always going to have to kind of watch out and be on edge. It's just something that, you know, we have to live with. Always keeping an eye out for protesters like the 31 extremists arrested near the Pride event in Idaho. We don't know what they're going to do or what they can do or if they have any weapons or anything with them because we don't got no weapons. What they do have is a desire to live authentically and inspire others to do the same. And we're here to make people happy, to have, to get people away from their problems for just a moment. I never thought that I would grow up to be this superhero, this amazing, beautiful superhero. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 939 and 81 degrees for now. Coming up next, how a local high school grad used her time to help others and give her a jump start to her future. And looking ahead, we mentioned several committees have hearings scheduled this week about the Uvalde school shooting, but these working committees versus calling for a special session of the Texas legislature has opponents saying this represents a failure of leadership. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, Dylan Collier will examine whether the criticism is justified in the latest Defenders report. This morning in our great graduate series, we're featuring a recent grad from O'Connor High School. Helena Garza has a passion for helping others and is already putting her skills to good use. Jonathan Koso, Koto visited with her and says hard work and dedication is placing her ahead of the power curve. Helena Garza is not only a senior at O'Connor High School, she's both a certified phlebotomy and EKG technician. Well, I've always had like, you know, a passion like in healthcare, and so that's why I took like, you know, these medical related classes. Garza has always had an interest in the medical field and says there was no need to look outside of her own home to find the perfect role model. So my, my mom is a nurse, and so she was a really great inspiration for me to kind of like, you know, further, you know, my education like in the medical field. Um, I also think it's just like, Overall, I just think the healthcare field is just so interesting. For Garza, it was never about just getting through high school. She used her time to really catapult her career and establish a work ethic while developing on-the-job experience as a research assistant where she is able to utilize her phlebotomy and EKG skills. And 
it's such a great experience because um, I'm kind of like learning to be more proficient in my skills and you know with this I, it's opened up more doors and I have better opportunities especially you know since in the future I want to become a nurse. She says keeping up with classwork staying involved in school clubs all while balancing a job isn't easy but understands it will all pay off. I think this is definitely preparing me you know for that adulthood because I know college is going to be you know a little more stressful a little more tiring and so like I'm able to kind of like practice like that work balance skills you know and and work, work in school uh, skills. Garza has been accepted to the nursing program at UIW and is set to start this fall. She says her success is in large part due to her teacher who has really been more of a mentor. I learn a lot from her and so she's she's awesome she's amazing and I really hope to keep in touch with her in the future. Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News. And best of luck to your future, Helena. It looks bright. Yeah, congrats. Uh, time now, 945, and things are warming up. It's 81 there, but uh, I know we'll see the triple digits today. Yeah. Quite a crowd behind you there, Mike. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they're hungry or might as well just take the picture, or they're just screaming about the heat. Yeah, they're hot. <laughs> Probably both. Both, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cute little picture, though. Aww. Fill in the chirps Aww. as needed. I like the hair too. Well, I know they're not. It's not hair, it's feathers, but looks know, like it. <laughs> like a little bed head going on right there. So Mike is called male pattern baldness, and <laughs> it happens. Okay. No, this one has hair. So. Okay. Uh, oh my anyway, goodness. I'm just saying that one does. It's not <laughs> bald. See. Hi. Good to Hi. see you. And I'll be back tomorrow, too, by the way. So uh, we've got that hazy look out there as of right now. I can barely make out the uh, skyline of downtown from the camera right here at 410 at I-10. All right, talking about the uh, Saharan dust. And yes, it is fairly thick as of right now. And let me grab another uh, clicker out here and put this into motion. And as you can see that it will stay thick today, but at least it is going to start to thin out somewhat as we go in toward the weekend. So that's one plus, I guess we're not going to have that orangey look to the sky out there, but it's still going to be every bit as hot. So we are going to continue from the 81 right now, get up into the upper 80s going in toward late morning, 90 at noon, a lot of sunshine. Of course, wind out of the south southeast about 10 15 miles per hour and then slightly breezy on top of that. Not overly windy 100 for high temperature again today. That'd be the 15th day so far this year that we've hit 100. Now a lot of folks even yesterday here in town when we were at 95 off to the west and southwest. Yes, we did have plenty of triple digit readings and that will continue obviously to be the case. And then we're going to be dropping into the mid 90s and back down to 90 degrees by nine o'clock tonight. Once again, the little bit of salvation out there is the fact that, yes, the humidity will be dropping down by later on this afternoon enough so we don't have those ridiculously high heat index values. So if you're in the shade, it'll be slightly more comfortable. Again, the humidity clouds come back in tomorrow morning. And then we do it all over again in the afternoon. So it's that 24 hour cycle that we're going through satellite picture, all the activity and there's really not much right now, but there's been that flooding up around Yellowstone, severe weather in the Great Lakes the past couple of days, another system coming on in here. But that's where the main flow in the, uh, the jet stream is right now. And that's where all the activity stays. And speaking of activity or lack thereof, there is nothing in the Atlantic Basin. I mean, a few areas of clouds here and there and the hurricane center is looking right here in the Western Caribbean right around Central America and says in the next five days 10% chance at something may be developing out there and you know if 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 everything worked out right would we get some rain from it possibly but again that's all just kind of playing the lottery right now as far as getting any decent rain around here. 90 today at noon, mostly sunny skies and a high temperature today is going to make it up to 100. Still all that haze out there from all the uh, Saharan dust and then at least that goes away, but the temperatures do not go away. We're going to keep a lot of heat around here all the way through the rest of the week going into the long holiday weekend. Of course, have we mentioned it's Father's Day? Yes. We we did it Briefly. at least once this morning. Okay, well, we'll mention it again. We've kind of undersold it, perhaps. And perhaps about 37 more times in the next uh, 24 hours when we're here. And mm. then, of course, a long holiday weekend going into uh, Monday. That's celebration of Juneteenth. And no change in the weather, though. Steph, let us know if we oversell this tomorrow. Okay. okay. I think you're okay. So it's far. a good reminder. Y'all right. did a good job for Mother's well, and, Day. And so. Luis, her husband, is appreciative of that, yeah. too. So. Yeah, I, 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 I'm already done. Wow, mm -hmm. fantastic. What'd Good news. Yeah. I yeah, can't would say. you? He's, he's actually awake right now. Oh, <laughs> us. I said, oh. not him. I, I don't care about him. No.
949, 81 degrees. And we come back, a preview of Pixar's Lightyear that's coming to theaters tomorrow. Before he was an action figure in Toy Story, Buzz Lightyear was a movie hero in the Pixar universe. CNN's Rick Domagilla has a look at the new movie coming out tomorrow. After a full year of being marooned, our first hyperspeed test flight is a go. Who are you talking to? Uh, no one. You were narrating again. I was not. Chris Evans goes to infinity and beyond in Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. Coming Star Command. Why don't they answer? It's not a story about a toy, so put yourself in the shoes of a boy named Andy in the year 1995. And Andy got the Buzz Lightyear toy, and all his friends knew who it was, and all of his friends were so excited to have it. What was the movie in Andy's world that they saw to make Buzz Lightyear such an icon? That's the movie this is. Engage stealth mode. It should buy us enough time. The Space Ranger is not alone in his hero's journey. Her role in that origin story was really mm. exciting, and knowing that um, there was a real handoff that gets to happen between my character, Alicia, onto Izzy, Kiki's character, was really exciting to know that, you know, even if someone's gone, they live on. What is happening right now? Alicia? Oh, no. That's my grandmother. The legacy aspect, Izzy trying to make sure that she lives up to everything that her grandmother, you know, was, but then realizing within that is her finding herself and being who it is she's meant to be from all the things she's learned. Blasting off in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Game six of the NBA Finals tonight at 8 o'clock right here on KSAT 12. Will the Warriors win their seventh championship or the Celtics even up the series and take this to a game seven? We will find out for sure tonight. So tonight's game will be in Boston, and we're going to have the highlights for you tonight on the Night Beat after the game and tomorrow with us on GMSA. And please don't forget, the House Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack meets again today for the third public hearing. It is expected to begin around noon. As soon as ABC's special coverage begins, we will broadcast on it, it on air. And we are taking one last look at the roadways. Let's have this on rotation right now. You can see that traffic's moving without any trouble. US 90 at Couples, there's 35 at Business 35. We're not really seeing a whole lot out there, but keep in mind, we still have that crash that was reported over on the northwest side, right over there off Loop 1604, not far from Northwest Military Highway. Slow moving traffic right now. So I'll tell you this, it's not a place I would like to be, but keep in mind that first responders are out there working to clear things up. So hopefully traffic will clear up pretty soon, but it has just been a mess out there, Mike. Yeah, and it's going to be kind of messy as far as the Saharan dust today. Now that's going to go away the next couple of days. It's going to be uh, thinning out, but and we had our little break from the triple digits yesterday here in town, but they are definitely back all the way through. And uh, I have obviously Sunday is Father's Day. It's also the 19th, Juneteenth, but I have the little graphic on there for Monday because that's the holiday day. The federal so, holiday. Gotcha. Yeah, it's obviously both days. And uh, we're just trying to talk about the holidays coming up this weekend to keep our minds off the temperatures. Uh, so. Off the heat. A bit of a diversion mm -hmm. there. Yes. You know, what's kind of cool this morning is that it's rare that we have our entire early morning yeah. show family here oh, all right. the way through 10 a.m. Yeah. So it's been it's nice just, having you back in, in both in more ways it, than one. Yeah. It, it's just those those little moments that really get to us here. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and we do it all again tomorrow, too. Yes. We I don't do. think I've ever even really stood next to you like this. Oh, Aww. whoa, Steven. <laughs> See, you all have right, to well, be I'm here glad, more often. That, I'm glad that was on TV. I'm going to make sure that it was recorded, and I'm going to save that moment for us. On the record. Very good. Well, you thank you for joining us. Back away. That was nice. Have a good day. Possible group hub tomorrow right here <laughs> live. Not that.